Hey, it's Rachel with Rachel Kohler Dog Training, and I'm here with Susan with Pack Leader Dog Training. Hey, guys. And we are here for our weekly Q&A. That time of the week again, Susan. So exciting. <laughs> right? I know. Like, I felt like it was just, uh, like, last Thursday, and I'm thinking, oh, Q&A Tuesday so far away. And then here we are. So. Right? I really, like... Because I've found that, too, towards the end of the week, like, Thursday or Friday, I'm thinking, like, man, it's been forever since we've done a Q&A. Um, you know, I'm ready for Q&A Tuesday because I'm missing it. And that's, like, Thursday or Friday. And then it's, like, okay, no, I've got a long time before it happens again. And then the next thing I know, it's, like, oh, crap, it's Tuesday. Right. It's crazy. Uh, I don't know where. Hey, I just got the notification that you're live. Oh, well, good. I didn't, I'm glad you know. I don't want that to be kept a secret. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't tell me that I'm live, but, you know, you're live, so. You could be live and you won't even know it. I'm going to share this on Instagram really quick. Okay. Since our streaming platform does not want to work with Instagram. So, if you guys follow my story, you know that I have a board and train right now. Her name is Bindi. Um, so, she is working while I'm working. So I'm doing the Q&A. She is on her place bed over there. So if you hear me say no, um, and if I get up, it's because she's getting off of her place bed. Um, but the cool thing about having a trained dog is they can be working while you're doing something. So in the, in the beginning, you're going to be doing a lot of reps. So you can pattern the commands that you want. But once you can start getting duration, you could be working your dog while you're doing stuff too. So it doesn't take as much of your time as it does in the beginning. So you could be making dinner, your dog's on place or in a down or in a lay. Um, and then when you go to eat, you can move them into a different command. So if they're in a place while you're cooking dinner, 20 minutes goes by. Now when you go to eat dinner, you can have them in a lay or a down. Um, so it's just really convenient. Once you put in that beginning work and those reps, it becomes a lot easier to kind of manage them. That is such a great point because uh, that's something I tell my one-on-one -on -one clients a lot. Um, because, you know, you want to look at that end game, right? So you want to be able to, like, put your dog in place while you go and cook dinner. So you've got that in your head. You want that. Well, in the beginning when you're training the dog, you can't just put a newly trained or, like, a dog who's still learning. You can't just throw them on place and then go cook dinner. You know, you have to put in the work first. So I always, like, tell people, you know, keep that in mind. Remember that that's what you're working towards. But you got to right. build up, too. Right. And it doesn't really take that long, um, depending on how you train. So with my dogs, I've advanced my training to, if they're on a verbal, I'm going to transfer you to the e-collar. Once you transfer them to e-collar, you can start building duration. So it, it doesn't really take that much time to get to where you want to get to, you know, to where you start building more duration. So if you take like a week and really do the reps and get the dog to understand what the commands mean, once you're on a verbal, we can move to the e-collar. And now that's where the fun begins because now you can build duration. So right. in a week's time, once they're on the e-collar, they can go from being on place for five minutes to now being on place for like an hour, you know, depending how much work you put into it. So it's really awesome. It really is. It's fun that you said that because, you know, looking back to – when I first started training, I've changed my training style so much. I'm always growing and learning and improving and all of that good stuff. But I couldn't get dogs on duration uh, the way I trained at the facility I was at until really you're at the third week. The dogs, it was only a four-week course, and dogs weren't on e-collar until the fourth week. Wow. And now it's like, once you know it on the verbal, why not start teaching you e-collar? Why not start teaching you that pressure? Right. Um, we're able to communicate with them better sooner. Um, and then just like you said, like proof on so many things. It's so fun. Yeah. Like, um, so? I don't know how I, what, is there something? Huh? Oh, I thought you were interrupting because there was a uh, question or something. Oh, no. I don't know how I trained before and got the things done in the time that I got them done in. Because you know, it's just so much quicker. Like, and it's not all about quickness, right? But as you get better with something and tailor your craft, you're going to just organically find ways that go smoother. Right. So, uh, with my board and trains, now by day, probably day three or four, they're moving to the e-collar. Probably. Where it used to be right. day four or five. It, I don't know. Just crazy. 
right? And so it's okay. So this is weird, all right? Because we're just chatting now. Um, you said that, and I'm like, wow. And like we talk every day, so like I know what your training course is like, but hearing it out loud is kind of crazy. But then uh -huh. I think about it, and I'm like, well, I don't usually do that until like. Uh, I don't usually do that until like the second week, but then uh -huh. I remember I'm only there three times a week. <laughs> so that's your day four. So it's like, okay. Uh -huh. yeah. Fun stuff. You like our festive back background because St. Patrick's Day is tomorrow. I had a I little freak. I didn't even realize tomorrow's St. Patrick's Day, so. So you're probably like, why did you just do this? I knew it was coming up. I just didn't realize how soon it was coming up. Well, the only reason I know that it's tomorrow is because I kind of freaked out today. So I have this shirt that I bought last year. Bought it off of Amazon, wore it for one day because it's got a blue tick on it. And it's got like shamrocks and stuff for St. Patrick's Day. Because you can find anything on Amazon, by the way. If you just go on Amazon and type in like Belgian Malinois St. Patrick's Day shirt, there's going to be one on there. I, I was doing it with my own old boss and we were doing it for fun. She found some with like chicken St. Patrick's Day shirts. Cause she's got a farm. It's like anything. It's on Amazon. So I got one with a blue tick because that's you know my parents' dog. And I'm like, I'll wear that tomorrow because it's gonna be the only day of the year I'm gonna wear it. So I'm working today and I see somebody post on social media, Happy St. Patrick's Day. And I freak out because this is very clearly not the shirt I'm talking about. So I thought I'd miss my one day a year to wear this shirt. But it's tomorrow. Oh good. Well good. I'm glad they posted that. Right. And then you realized. <sighs> yeah. All right. Well, I have a dog training question for you, Susan. Okay. Because while nobody's on here now, this won't go up for a replay. So I guess no, we should like you. ask some questions. I'm ready. Okay. okay. So, Susan, my dog barks and pulls to people during our walks. Mm -hmm. She just wants to say hello, though. What should I do? Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is train a good heel, and you're going to start inside first. So if we can't get our dogs to listen inside with minimal distractions, we can't expect them to listen outside. Or if we do, we're going to have to use a lot of force and corrections. Um, so let's set them up for success. So I would start with training a heel inside. I do have a, um, a good video on how to train heel. You're going to do food lowering first, move to leash pressure and then move them to the e-collar, then we're gonna work outside. But first you wanna make sure that the picture inside looks good first. So don't ever try to heal your dog in the driveway if they're pulling in a heel inside, right? So I always say perfect the picture before you add on. So perfect the picture of a heel inside the house before you move to the driveway and then perfect that picture, then move to your sidewalk. And if that looks good, now go for a walk. I like that. Yes, um, Susan has a great how-to series, so check that out. Um, but yeah, one thing I wanted to comment on uh, for this is, you know, the question says, but they just want to say hello to people. Um, oh. And to be quite honest, I don't really care. <laughs> like, I don't care why. The fact of the matter is you're pulling and you're barking and you're lunging. Mm -hmm. We're not going to say hi to them because I don't want to say hi to people. We're walking. It's me and you time. Um, so I don't care that you want to go say hello to them or if you want to go attack them. Now, obviously, if you want to attack them, we got some bigger fish to fry, but still, the fact of the matter is we're not doing that. So then train them a heel, unless you like being pulled around. Um, but that's one thing I wanted to comment on because I get that a lot of the time when I'm uh talking about or hearing about dogs who are least reactive. Least reactive doesn't necessarily mean your dog's aggressive, it just means they're reacting. And their reaction is a hyper amped up state where they're barking and they're lunging. So I hear that a lot. Like, yeah, my dog barks and lunges and pulls towards people and other dogs, but I just want to say hi. I'm like, I don't care what they want to do. Or you just you, stop want to be, you want to be dragged across the street by your dog? Um, that brings another point up that I, I think I talked to my husband about, actually, is when I'm asking clients about their dog and to, like, explain what their dog is doing that they want, you know, fixed. Usually people want me to solve behavior issues. Now, how I do that is telling the dog no, but then now tell them what to do. So I end up training them their commands. Right. But usually no one ever asks me, hey, how do I turn my dog down? They'll just be like, hey, how do I get my dog to stop barking or whatever? So anyway, I was talking to my husband. I said, people like to preface 
she's really sweet. Like, I have a really sweet dog. She's really affectionate, but she does growl at my son. I don't know why you feel like you need to preface it. It's not, it's like you're trying to tell me, like, I do love my dog, but X, right? right? We know you uh -huh. love your dog. Right. Um, we know your dog's a good dog. And we know you're interested to, like, help your dog because otherwise you wouldn't be using a trainer. So mm -hmm. you don't don't feel like you have to preface it. You know what I mean? Like, do right. you get that, too? Yeah, and it's like, no offense, but how sweet and affectionate are they? They're growling. But, yeah, it's like, don't, don't preface it because the thing is, like, out. Sorry. I, I broke her from her kennel because she'd been in there for, like, a while. I'm like, you probably want to stretch your legs. And then yeah. she came and got me. Um. But yeah, I mean, I have a dog I'm training right now who tried to bite me, but like, I still love her. Like we've made that bond. So it's like, you don't have to worry that I'm not gonna like your dog or not gonna think your dog's nice. Your dog just needs that guidance and that structure. So I'm gonna give it to him. You don't have to be like, it's okay. They're so sweet. You're gonna love them. It's fine. They're super nice, uh, but yeah. like, it's okay. I'm gonna love your dog anyways. I love all the dogs I train because that's who I am. Well, because, you, <laughs> because we end up building a relationship. It's not just like we go- Oh yeah, we're just talking about that. You know, <laughs> we build a relationship through training. Um, so one of my clients actually, um, we were talking about prongs and e-collars, and she was just nervous. Um, she's like, is this going to ruin my relationship with my dog? Is it going to make my dog not, you know, like me? And I said, you are going to have such a beautiful relationship with your dog using these tools. And her response was, well, I already have a beautiful relationship with my dog. And what's that, relationship like? hmm? I said, what's that relationship look like? Right. Well, I said, well, yes, you do. Like you love your dog. Your dog loves you. All this happy, fun stuff. But you came to me because your dog doesn't listen to you or follow through or that kind of thing. So these tools will help make your relationship better. Yes, you already have something beautiful, but can you imagine having something more beautiful? Because <laughs> it's just a way to like, communicate with them really it's I could communicate with a dog without a prong and without an e-collar so could a, a client but it's gonna be an easier transition for me to communicate with the dog I I'm in tune with their body language I know when to add spatial pressure or whatever normal people don't know that so just tools are an easier way to help me as Rachel would say get you guys to speak the same language so I don't right. know I just made me think about that I, I think it was funny because you said as Rachel would say, and I'm like, what do I say? Um, but that just made me think of something funny, not funny, but cute that I wanted to share with you. So I'll share it now. Yeah. So anyone who knows like Gaia's story, I got her from what I call Judoville, um, just crap place, whatever, right? So I got her from there and we've come a long way in like building my relationship with her and just her relationship with like just life, just her learning that like, she's allowed to be a dog and she's not going to be corrected for like breathing wrong. Um, and we've come a long way with that. So I've shared before that my parents' dog blew. I can't move his prong collar because I used to keep it stored downstairs. Now it stays in my room. Um, but if I was like reorganizing downstairs, if I'd moved blue's prong collar, he would get like really excited, like <laughs> really excited. And I'd be like, feel bad because I'm we're not going anywhere now but he heard the prom callers so he's like yeah we're doing something <laughs> um so it built our relationship a lot more and then um with Gaia she lived in a training facility for about a year so she never really cared about the sounds of prong collars knee collars being moved because she heard that all day and her experiences with them weren't fun for the first time I think it was like yesterday the day before I was organizing my room and I moved her e-collar and she literally jumped up and started wiggling and like ran over to me. Oh God. And you know, you know Gaia. So for her to be like, oh, we're going somewhere, we're going outside. I was like, who are you? Um, then I had to tell her no, because I was cleaning. Oh. <laughs> oh, so How about, I mean, tell them the story about the receiver. Oh gosh. Yeah, so her past foster mom uh, would threaten her uh, with the receiver. So I don't have it on me, but she would be like, meh, and like shove it in her face, like I guess while she was correcting her. Um, yeah. So when I first got Gaia, I would wear it around my neck because why not? We're going outside, like didn't want to shove it in my pockets, whatever, blah, playing jolly ball, would not play with the ball because I was wearing the e-collar. 
So if it was in her sight, she was scared to do anything. Um, even now, sometimes, very rarely, because we've worked on it a lot. If I'm like wearing it and I just touch it to like take it off or do whatever, she's kind of like, mm. but that just shows that was like how she was trained. So it's not that e collars are bad. It's just that her association with it, with how she was trained, wasn't. But now after being with me and me like retraining her and rebuilding her her picture, right? Rebuilding her experience with training and with boundaries and structure and blah, blah, blah. She's like, it's not that bad. So now for her to get excited when I move it, because she won't think I'm going to put it on her and we're going to go do something. It's really cute. That's so cute. That's so great. How awesome. Um, I was gonna, so I actively will tell my clients, I don't want to see you doing that. So like, I don't want to see you saying, hey, you better, right. don't make me use it. It shouldn't be that the dog's responding to this. The dog should re be responding to your verbal no. So mm -hmm. don't, and some people accidentally cue them too. So if you have it wearing it as a lanyard like I am, if your hands right. not all the time, if you say no and now you go to grab your collar, the dog will associate every time you touch this, they get corrected. So when a, when my clients are first starting, I actually recommend that they don't wear the lanyard because then you're going to have it on your neck and you're never going to have it with you. So right. if you're actually training your dog, I'll have it like not on the lanyard because it's always in my hand then because I can't set it down somewhere because it has to go with me. So this way your hand's always on it and the dog doesn't get that picture of, Ooh, when you pick the collar up, I get it corrected. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, let's see. Automator. Don't know who this is uh, from YouTube says hello. Hey Hi. guys. Hey there. Thanks for joining us. Um, but yeah, no, that's a great point. I'll find, I found myself before. So dogs really pick up on body cues. They like things like they're reaching for the collar or reaching for your treat pouch. Like dogs are very, very observant creatures. So like on the other end, so not just for corrections, but for rewards, right? I've had clients who are like say good as they're reaching into the treat pouch or tell their dog to do something as they're reaching into the treat pouch. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to need that cue because you're not always going to get a treat. So you're not going to only listen when I'm reaching for the tree. Exactly. Um, so as trainers and, you know, we're not perfect. We have our moments like um, I'll touch on that in a second, but it's always <laughs> like, we have to try to like be pretty body neutral when we're doing a command. Um, so a lot of times when I'm on e-collar work with the dog, I found that when it was hoodie season, I would kind of just have my hands in my pockets or now I just kind of like have my hands behind my back sometimes if I'm just walking around. I don't want it to be like the exact same picture every time, obviously, but I don't want the dog to see the cue of, okay, now I'm like messing with the remote or now I'm going to like reach for a treat or now I'm going to like point to things. I want it to be all based off of what I say and not anything that I might be doing with my body. Mm -hmm. Gosh, they pick up on like the littlest things. Yeah. Right? Like um, with your dog, Abby, that you were training with the owners when they would do like a certain. Oh my gosh. Thing. I was like, you're talking about. Yeah. So Abby, love her. She is a sweetie. Uh, Abby was my dog who was the most sensitive to those cues, which is what Susan was referring to. So her transition from me to her owners took a little bit longer because I didn't realize how heavily she was focused on my body cues. So something as simple as I'm standing this far away from the place cot when I recall her to put her on place and then her mom is standing this far away from the place cot, Abby was like, whoa, it's a whole new thing. Or something as simple as, you know, to help her out, I'll take a step backwards or um, not even like leaning forward at all when you recall her. Like little things like that, she was just like, whoa. Um, she was a really special case in a lot of ways, but we're able, and the thing about body cues though, is it's not irreversible. So like, yes, I want to help out her parents and give them like the tips and the tricks and whatever. The fact of the matter is place is still placed no matter if I'm standing here or here. So we were able to work through it, but it was definitely something that it was like a shock. It was like, I didn't realize how observant she was to all of those things. Yeah. 
How cool is it though that you were able to notice that? You know, like we have that skill set, and um, I don't know about you, but I feel like half of mine was just I had it, and the other half I learned. So yeah. I'm just in tune with animals. But it's like I can tell if it's like, oh, okay, she's a little nervous because you're too close to the bed or whatever. Right. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah, no, it wasn't. And I will say, like, it was it was really cool to like because I was confused at first, like, why is this struggle here? And it was honestly things like as little as they like, I think one time was standing sideways when they recalled her and she was like, what do I do? Um, and then when they stood like this and they recalled her, she was like, okay, cool. Uh, yeah. But uh, she was definitely really, really observant. <laughs> um, I have a question for you if you're ready. Um, sure. Why not? Okay. Um, do you like how my cat is making his own like hole over here? So like I closed the blind so he can't see. So he actually used his paw and he stuck his face through the blind so he can see. Um, um, well, you turned off the TV and that was really rude of you. So I know it, it really was. My 14 week old puppy will not learn to leave things alone that aren't his. When I say no, he doesn't listen. Advice? So. 14 week old puppy is not leaving things alone and you say no and it doesn't work. Yeah. So have you tried saying don't touch that? No, I'm just kidding. Okay. So the <laughs> thing is, the thing is, it doesn't matter what you're going to say to this dog. What I want to know is what are you doing? So saying no means nothing unless you're going to follow through with the consequence. Dogs don't speak English. The only English words they know are the ones that we teach them and the ones that we put in the work to show them over and over and over and over that this is what this means, right? So we can talk about why does your 14 week old have, why does your 14 week old puppy have the freedom to be making these bad choices? We can touch on that later. Um, but no's gotta have consequence. So I can tell a dog no all day long if they do not have a consequence a correction of any form to follow that, no means nothing. So what is a correction going to be? It could be a compressed air, finger poke, finger in the mouth, whatever, 14 weeks old. Yeah. So you just got to find your dog, find a correction that's valuable to them to show them like, hey, no means something not fun is going to happen. Maybe you like shouldn't do that. Yeah, no means no. So what I found like a lot of people do is they'll say no, mm -hmm. and that doesn't work. So they escalate it. So it's like, no, no, no. And they're like yelling it. <laughs> right. And like some dogs that might work, like for my wallflower of a dog over there, because they're, they're hurt if you look at them the wrong way. Like certain dogs are more sensitive. So yeah, if you yell no, it's a noise aversion. Same thing as if you right. shake like, um, coins in a can. So that'll work for some dogs, sure, but I don't want to have to do that. I want to literally be able to whisper no to you, and you'll be like, sorry, mom, didn't mean to do that. Because right. if I'm in public, or who the hell cares, if I'm wherever, I want to be able to be like, no. And then the dog's like, oh, shoot. <laughs> right. You know? It's like, oh, my gosh, like when you're out with, like, your mom in public, and she just gives you the look, and you yes. know. She doesn't have to scream at you, but she just looks at you, and you're like, there's going to be some consequences. Yes. Um, I mean, I never had that because like, I'm a child. Um, but yeah, that also brings up another point, And then I have a comment I'll read in a second. Um, is that's bringing in emotion. So the raise in the voice, you're getting emotional. You're getting angry. You're getting frustrated. The dog is picking up on your anger and your frustration. They don't care what you're yelling. You could be getting angry and yelling, good boy, but you're angry about it. And they know that. So they're not, like you said, responding to the no. They're responding to that loud sound. Um, so I'm training is emotionless. I'm not saying no because I'm mad at you. I'm saying no because you can't get into my stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so this is off of your Facebook. Um, Nelson Boy Miles says, do you girls know the song I Feel Good by James Brown? I do not know that song. Yes, you do. I'm not Maybe singing, but you know it. Oh, is it the one that just says I feel good? Yeah. yeah. 
I don't know like artist names. Um, oh. I just assume it. I don't know song titles either. So I don't know the title of the song. I don't know who sang it. I know if I hear it, but that's it. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm like, yeah, you know it. Okay. The really high pitch. So like, yeah. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Well. I mean, I hope so. that's the song I'm thinking of. Well, if there's another one, then they ripped off that song by stealing that song title. Yeah. All right. So, Susan, I had a question for you. Are you ready? I'm ready. You feel good? I feel good. All right. Like, I know that I should. Uh, every time I go to sit on the couch, my dog jumps up first and takes my spot. I want him to be allowed on the couch. But this is so annoying. What should I do? Okay, so and I've seen this boy jumps up on the couch real quick and gets right under. Like you go to sit down and he jumps under, under your butt. So you can sit okay, so a couple things you could do. At least I could do, or I would do. So you could say no and correct that behavior because you don't want them like skirting under where you're gonna sit because the dog knows. Like you're going to sit and they're like skirt. Um, you could say no and correct it, or you could say out. Because out just means get out of here until I tell you you don't have to. You know, so we may revisit that. So you could teach your dog out. Your dog jumps on the couch. You say out. The dog gets the hell out. And then after a minute, you say break, and the dog can come up beside you. What would you do? Um, no, that sounds good. What I would do is I'd probably look at it um, as an overall thing. So right now the dog is like the couch is something I can jump up on really hyper whenever I want to, right? Mm -hmm. Not what we're doing with the couch, like, you know? Um, so I would change that. So I would take away couch privileges. So right now you're not gonna get on the couch uh, unless you're invited up. So I'd start off, no couch. Um, <laughs> I, um, I'd start off with no couch privileges. Um, get that clear. So the dog's not jumping up on the couch for a while. Then I'm gonna start inviting you up. So then you can get up on the couch only when I say up. And you can practice that, put a leash on the dog, help them, teach that up means to jump up on the couch. And then out, you're going to want to practice out drills. Out means to get off. Um, but fun fact, this is about Mr. Mars that I'm working with right now. Um, oh, I was and, not expecting that. Yeah, he, uh, his owner went to go show me. And it was seriously, he was like, go, he was just talking me through it. We didn't think Mars is going to do it. Mars comes running in from the other room. It's not funny, but it is. Mars comes running in from the other room and like jumps up on the couch right before he sits down. And like, okay. he's just, he's not doing it like steal a spot. He's just doing it to be on the couch with him. But he's like, I want him on the couch. Like, this is annoying. Um, so Mars is about to graduate training. So I'm like, you know, in the 90 day protocol, no couch, no couch for 90 days. Okay. Then I don't know if it has to be the full 90 days. Um, but then once he's learned that he can't jump up on couches whenever he wants, then we can start inviting him up. Right. I like that. It's more permission based. Yeah. It's a good but, idea. Are you ready well, for? I was like, ready for my next question? Yeah. yeah. Um, is a dog ever too old to start e collar training? Ever too old? Yeah. Um. Well, this sounds like a question for Miss. I trained a eighteen-year-old dog last week. Um. He was thirteen. Okay. Um, no, your dog is not too old to start e-collar training. So I always say as long as your dog is physically and mentally fit, meaning they don't have dementia and they're not walking around in circles and they're able to physically perform whatever task you're asking them to do, um, then they can be trained. So yes, your dog can be e-collar trained. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like if it is a dog ever too young, yes. So we usually don't start to lay on the e-collar till like 16-ish weeks old, um, mm -hmm. but that's after we've already taught them the basic commands and you use the e-collar to layer on the commands they already know. But right. it is never too old, no. Because um, right. I did have somebody I did a consult with and she asked me, she said, you know, is he able to be trained? Is he too old? And I actually get that question a lot more than I thought I would. Um, a lot. And this guy, this dog is only three. I was so about to say, wasn't that one like really young? Yeah, yeah. Um, but people just don't know. They don't know. Which is, which is kind of sad, though, to think that there's such a strong misconception out there 
that an old dog can't learn new tricks because mm-hmm. it's just like to me like really sad that people think huskies can't be trained and people like genuinely believe that they've got a husky and their dog is just a maniac and they can't do anything about it or you know my dog i adopted this dog and he was already three years old and i can't train him now because he's too old that's sad like old dogs can learn new tricks it's, can train. it's sad when owners think they can't there's no solution for their problem right really sad. it actually makes me actively angry to hear people spouting those lies because they you know what i mean like they're they're spreading those lies making owners believe that right I had, uh, like, on that topic, I had a consult with a Husky, um, and they went to a big box store. Their Husky is people-friendly, dog-friendly. He's just hyper and jumps on people. That's his only problem. He's hyper, and he jumps. Big box store that starts with the name Pet <laughs> and doesn't like shop collars. Um, no, stop. Um, they said that this dog was untrainable. Three of their trainers that worked there said that this dog was untrainable. This family was at their wits end. They were so devastated. I said, that must be like really like discouraging to have three trainers tell you that your dog is untrainable and y'all love them with your whole heart. And now you have to deal with a dog who is jumping and is rude and just doesn't have any manners yeah. because the force-free positive only trainers said he was untrainable because he is yeah so yeah they were just like that she told me she was like it was heartbreaking to hear that because we love him and we thought our life with him was just going to be miserable mm-hmm. so it was really sad and then i got mad at that box store. and then they came out with the whole stop the shock program so i got even more annoyed with them <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. yeah well whose turn is it your turn Task. My turn. Okay, so Susan. Um, my dog is scared of everything. Well, agility build is confidence. Yes. Once we get your dog to not be scared of everything, right? So I'm not gonna take a dog that's as described fearful of everything. So I'm assuming even like going outside would be scared or like hearing a random noise would be scary. So we need to build up the dog's confidence until, um, I guess, you're proofing things, right? So I need the dog to be able to exist on a walk, go to the store, you know, and they don't have to be like, oh, God, so full of themselves. But I want them to be able to, like, walk and, like, hold a command. You can see they're, like, kind of nervous, maybe, um, but they're working through it, working through it. So... You, can't, you shouldn't just take a scared dog and like kind of throw them into that situation of agility because they already have to have a little bit of confidence to start um, before you can like add on to it. So yes, it will help, but we need to be, we need to get your dog like public access training so it can actually like exist out in public before we can ever add agility on. So um, I, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you really quick. Yeah. Uh, because uh, my patience has worn out. Uh, um, do you know this person before I say anything? I don't Who's think that? so. Okay. So this is a dog training Q&A. Um, so we are not going to dance um, to this song. Uh, if you would like to hear the song, you are more than welcome to search it on YouTube and listen to it on your own time. Um, if you have any dog training questions, feel free to ask. Um, but I don't think this is cute. I'm not going to dance to this song. It's really inappropriate. So do me a favor and stop annoying me. <laughs> and yeah, that's how I feel about that. And like, do you honestly think that's going to work? Sorry, but that's how I feel. And Susan, if you do know this person and he's joking, I apologize. But it's like, come on, guys. <laughs> but not all men, right? Mm-hmm. Not all men. Not, not all men. Not all men. So yeah, thank you for that, sir. But yes, so about the confidence building and agility on this dog training Q&A, exactly what you said. So if your dog is scared of everything, to ask them to go through an agility course, holy heck, that's going to be terrifying, right? Mm -hmm. So like you said, let's build their confidence through other stuff first. So Miss Sally, for example, 
She's a great example of this. She is just scared of life. She's come such a long way in her, she's on her seventh week of training with me now. Completely unrecognizable from when I first met her, right? But she wants to do a jiddly, right? Because she's a border collie and that would be fun and that's what border collies do. Mm -hmm. She's not ready for that because the first time we went in the front yard, she couldn't exist in the front yard without it being like the end of the world. So I explained to her mom that if I were to try to take Sally, who was scared to be in the front yard, if I were to try to take her to an agility ring, that would be like asking me to run a 5K tomorrow. Right. That wouldn't work out. For me. I need to build up to that. Um, I need to, oh, Susan, you're frozen. I know. Okay. Um, I need to build up to that 5K first before I can go run it. So for Sally, we need to see this in the front yard first. We need to walk around the neighborhood first um, and do all that stuff. So, yes, yes. When your dog gets to that point, that, point, that is definitely that something is that they can do. Yeah. Sorry, I'm echoing a lot. Oh, sorry. Is that better? Yeah. If you're doing it, you're doing it. Well, I was trying to see if I could like kick him out. Oh. And, or, okay, like, as long as it doesn't just go. Learn your lesson. Shut the hell up. Sorry if you know this person, but do you really think that's appropriate? And you really think that's like it's 2021. Like, stop harassing people. Thank you. Have a blessed Tuesday. Have a blessed Tuesday. <laughs> Have a blessed Tuesday. No, I just don't want to do shit. What? I said that's what you said earlier to that truck that was like blowing cardboard. Oh my pieces. god, yes, I was on the highway today. And could you see in the video? It literally looked like they took stacks of cardboard and you know, stacked them up, maybe they're going to recycle them. Huge truck and just cardboard pieces are just flying. <laughs> you have secured it a little bit better. Um, what I was like, could you please secure the cardboard? Have a blessed. <laughs> oh my god, that was fun. Yeah. I don't know. That's how I feel. I'm like that at the my life where I'm going to take shit from people and excuse me because I don't like it. But I'm not going to just. I got fired from an internship because I didn't allow that. Mm -hmm. Women are conditioned to not say what's on their mind and to not stand up for themselves and to just be quiet and let the man say whatever they want to say. Not I. So yeah. I got to practice yeah, what I preach. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to say anything at the second. Time. At the third, I was like, patience up. Out. Do we train men out? Disengage oh, and walk away. That would be so great. That's my song for out. It says disengage and walk away. Let's out train men. Out. <laughs> Vomit. You know, okay, this question a lot. I get asked a lot, can you train my kids? Or do you train kids? All the freaking time. I was like, no. No, I don't. Uh, well, it's funny, though, because I did a lot of babysitting. Um, I have a lot of experience with, like, young children. So when I'm talking to parents, I'm able to like, use analogies and things that make a lot of sense to them. And then that's when I really get the, you're going to be a great mom one day, or, you know, train my kid. And I'm like, can they wipe their own nose? <laughs> um, I'm going to close out and reopen. Because ever since I, like, changed things, you're going in and out. And right. I just yeah. um, So you fill the void. <laughs> That's airtime. I'll be right back. Okay. Um, so, um, you can talk about what you do today with your puppies, like puppy desensitization. Okay, cool. Bye, Susan. So now we're in really big, I think. Yeah, it is. That's unfortunate. So while Susan is gone and I'm going to sit here awkwardly by myself and hate my life for a little bit, uh, let's talk about puppy desensitization. So I've got a lot of puppies right now in training with me. And oh my goodness. They're so cute, first of all. Um, but I want to talk about the importance of nothing because Susan's, oh, I asked her out. Okay. Hey, Susan. I used that whole time to talk about what I was going to talk about. So thank you for being quick. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. 
<laughs> you left me alone with the creeps, Susan. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. Oh, um, I cracked myself up. Okay. All right, Susan, are you ready? Or do you have a question for me? Or is it your question? I have a question for you. Um, what's the best dog treat to use? Dog treat? Yeah. All right, so we get that we get asked this a lot. So I'm gonna start by saying, if I lived in a fairy tale world where I got to have boarding trains and had full control over dogs' food, the treat I would use is their daily kibble. For the most part, unless I really wanted to give them a high reward for something, they would be getting their daily kibble. They could work through it for work for it throughout the day, but my dog doesn't really like their kibble. Okay. Then they don't take it the first couple times you offer it to them. But eventually they're going to get hungry. They're going to eat their daily kibble. You're going to be able to give your dog hiccups. Excuse me. You're going to be able to give your dog a lot more treats without them getting like fat or an upset tummy. Mm -hmm. So that's the best treat if we're going to be honest. The <laughs> treat that I use because I don't have full control over my dog's food is this. It's Stuart pork liver treats. It's freeze-dried. Susan uses the beef liver. This is what it looks like. They're pretty cool. The thing about these, though, that's really annoying is all of my clients ask about these, and I try to explain them, like, guys, you don't want to buy these treats. You, yeah. can, buy another, you can buy another single ingredient dehydrated, dehydrated treat, and your dog's probably going to love them, but you can't have them, sweetheart, because you are going to get sick. Sorry. Guy sees me shaking around these treat buckets, and she's like, can I have some? Oh. And I could put her in command, but she's been in command like all day, so I'm giving her some free time. So, fun fact. Out. This is the size they come in. Okay. And then I take scissors. I'm going to find a small piece so Susan can make a smart out comment to me. And this is the size I cut them to. Oh my God, I can't even see it. Can okay. you hold it again? I'm trying. Eh. There's this, 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 this. Oh, that's the size wow. difference. Okay, why do I cut them up so tiny? So I can give the dog more. I am not gonna give my dogs this freaking gigantic treat every time they do something. Could you imagine how fat and how sick your dog is gonna get? So it comes in a bucket of giganticness and I cut it into this. Whee. So I got a blister on my thumb right now because I cut two buckets yesterday. Oh. So don't buy these treats. I'm pretty sure I get these because like I can get them in bulk and I train a lot of dogs. I'm pretty sure what's it called? Pure bites. Yes. You can use those sometimes. They're nice and stinky and they're dehydrated, um, single ingredient treats. So yeah. I don't really actually didn't actually answer this question the way I was supposed to. I was supposed to say to use food and that the treat doesn't matter and your dog's gonna eat when they're hungry and all that good stuff. But I wanted to show my treats because I had them right here. And this is the first time I've had this many cut up and ready to go. <laughs> no, it worked out great because you just you just cut them yesterday. I've never had this many cut. I've not ever had this many stocked up. And I've got two more to cut. Well, that's especially because, cool. like, okay, with my boarding trains now, I don't mm -hmm. know if that's why, but I'm, like, blowing through my treats. And it's right? really annoying because then you have to cut more treats. <laughs> And then, right, okay, so the first time I went through, like, a bucket in, like, a day, and I was like, oh, my God, I got to cut more treats. And you were like, Rachel, be thankful that you've got so many dogs that you need to cut more treats. And I was like, you know what, girl? I You're right. You're right. And then you were griping about cutting treats, and I was like, Susan, be grateful. Mm -hmm. So true. <sighs> I'm just sharing, sorry, I'm sharing a picture to um, my Instagram story um, of this Q&A really quick. And so I'm going to let you fill the void for a minute. Oh, okay. Um, so Miss Bindi, who I have here for a board and train, um, she actually had some single sessions at the end of last year. Um, she had about three single sessions. In the meantime the owner wanted to have her do some like group classes before she continued on with my training. So she did group classes um, and somewhere else. I'm pretty sure they did different commands than I would have. Um, so it's not like she was going over those same commands or whatever. I think it was more like socialization. So 
I trained with her back in October, maybe November. And she started a board and train with me Friday. That's right. I said Friday. I, I know. Her, Don't even talk to me. I got her at 11, 11 a.m. Friday. So day one, I'm like, well, let's see what you know. So I'd ask her to do something, and I teach seven commands. Now, of the seven. Because you're a baddie. Commands, Sorry. I know she did <laughs> <laughs> I know she didn't know out because we didn't train that, but the other six commands we had trained, so I wanted to see what she would do. So I was asking her to do, you know, all the things. And to my surprise, because the owner said she had not really been working on the commands since the training, since the one on ones, she did all the things. All of them. So I'm like, okay, well, you're on a verbal, so let's just move you to the e collar. <laughs> what? Um,. And she's doing phenomenally, like in the house, really great. Um, we had one blow off of a command the other day, yesterday, so we worked through that. Outside, she's doing great. The most challenging thing for her, I think, is exciting people. So being like dragging the leash and seeing people go by and having her not run up and greet them. She's friendly, don't worry. Um, <laughs> but she wants to say hi to everybody. So my her, her challenge is just... So I'll either say, if she runs at them, so it's like, okay, what do you do? If your dog's right. dragging the leash, and she knows all the things, but I have the leash on to hold her accountable. If she charges at somebody, I'm going to say no and correct that, because you should never charge somebody. But if she right. just starts, like, trotting over, goes towards them, um, I'll say out, because that means disengage from that. Um, sorry, my dog taking toys out of the kit. Pulling the I toys thought your cat just out in. Yeah. Yeah. See you out. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So that's her biggest challenge right now. But otherwise, she's uh, doing pretty great. It's um, pretty great. <laughs> it is amazing. And um, just saying, everyone should go check out Susan's update she's doing. So, okay. So Susan and I, I don't know if y'all know this, but like we're kind of close friends. Like we talk sometimes, not just on Q&A Tuesday. Yeah, this um, is the one time we talk. It's actually rare when we're not talking. Um. But I get a lot of really great ideas from Susan. And I think sometimes she gets good ideas from me about, like, what not to do. Um, so, <laughs> um, but Susan is now doing uh, video updates with Bendy. So anybody watching this, I don't care if it's three years from now and you're watching our reruns because we're, like, so awesome. Um, today is March 16th, 2021. Uh, so go check out, like, Susan's updates on Bendy. And I'm sure she'll have, like, lots of cool dogs if you're watching in the future. Um, but I love your video updates. I think that was like the coolest thing yeah. I've ever seen. Um, because it is so cool. It's like, hey, let's check in about where this dog is. And it's gonna be really exciting if you continue to do these. Uh, it would be really awkward for you to be like, Rachel, I hate these. I don't wanna do them anymore. Shut up. Know, right? um, <laughs> well, if you do continue to do them, it'll be cool to like be able to look back and be like, okay, well, these are how the different dogs progress throughout training because yeah. each dog is so stinking different. And like you said today, read the freaking dog. Read the <laughs> freaking dog. Reasons. So different. Oh, oh God. They really are. Yeah. Um, I hope everybody likes my Bindi updates. Like Rachel said, it's something new that I'm trying. Because really, I only update people on my board and trains on my story. And so if you don't watch my story, and plus I'm not story savvy yet, and I'm not saving my stories, <laughs> um, you might not see the updates on my dogs. So now I'm putting it actually in the feed like in my um, as an actual post and so I updated day one here's what we're doing day three here's what we're doing and Bindi is not normal so if you watch Bindi's right. updates it's not normal she is like whoa yeah. and beyond. But day three we were working outside with the long line that's unheard insane. of but like it's you mentioned before and I love that you commented it because it was funny because when I was first watching your updates I was like Please, I really hope she explains that like Bindi's passed and you did. Um, because I'm like, man, if not, that would have been like really confusing to some people, but you did and you explained it well and she's doing so good. And I'm sure like now you probably feel like she should be like graduating tomorrow because she's so yeah. great, but you've got another what week and a half with her? Yeah. Which is just a week and a half more time that you're gonna get to like prove her and like do all that good stuff. It's gonna be great. Exactly. And I I do wanna build her confidence a little. She's not crazy shy. Um, like with people, obviously, but she is like, she'll hear a noise and get distracted. Um, she doesn't have a interest to like do the things. So like <laughs> when we're downstairs in the fun room, 
she's like, I'm not really food motivated, so I don't really want to do the things. Um, right. So it would be nice to get her like jumping over things and like um, jumping on things, taking her to Lowe's and getting her on like the carts and that kind of thing. Just so that would be fun. Yeah, she gets more exposed to noises and that kind of. Yeah. It's really cool stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But now that I talked for an hour, I'm going to give you a question here. Oh, okay. Have you ever had a stray dog approach you while walking your dog? And how do you, you handle it? Um, so, thank God I have not had this exact situation. Um, so, here's the thing. Off-leash dogs or stray dogs, those things just really tick me off. Like, get away from me. Um, sorry. If I have another dog with me. If you are, like, a stray dog and it's just me, like, I'm going to help you. Um, and if I have another dog with me, you need to get away from me. Um, but I did one time. I was, had Gaia. And I was out at this little, like, beachy area. And... I was told that there's this neighborhood dog who just wanders oh. around and he's friendly kind of, uh, for the most part, you know, he's just like weird and he'll come and approach dogs and he's fine. I don't care if you're freaking friendly, stay away from me and my dog and his owners just let him wander the neighborhood and do whatever he wants. I'm not okay with that. Gaia's fine with dogs. Gaia would go out and social. She's fine with blue. She's got a little friend, but on leash, for a strange dog that I don't know to come approach us, first off, my anxiety is through the roof because I don't know anything about you. You could be like, you can like have rabies. I don't know. Don't come at me, Susan. Um, so it's like, no. So what I did in this situation was I told the person I was with because I was at her beach house and this is her neighbor's dog. I said, if this dog approaches me while I'm with my dog, I had compressed air on me. I was like, I will compress air him and he better get the hell away and get away quick because mm-hmm. it's not going to be pretty for him if he doesn't. Because guy is not leash reactive with me because she knows better, but like at the vet, she's leash reactive. So I'm not trying to I'm not trying to find out. Um, so I did. Dog came up and I compressed air at him and he ran away. Now, just out of curiosity, did you say no and do it, or did you just do it? No, I think I just did it. Oh, okay. I didn't mark it. I didn't make no valuable for this dog. I'm really curious because I think I think I would say no. <laughs> I'm trying I'm to say no. Well, because okay, so the first time I did it, I freaking my compressed air thing, I feel like the up is locked and the down is unlocked or something. Whatever it is, I always feel like it should be reversed. So I think the first time I went to compressed air him, it I either didn't push it hard enough or nothing came out or it was locked or something stupid happened. But he ended up like wandering off. The next time, homeboy snuck up behind me, and next oh. thing I know, and I could only hear him because I could hear his like feet like walking on the gravel. Homeboy was like right like this far away from Gaia, and I was like, <laughs> like straight and <laughs> quick, and he went running, and I was like, maybe you should leave me alone then. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm like I'm not okay with random dogs just approaching me and my dog. Yeah. Oh, but to actually answer the question and not just tell my stupid story. <sighs> It's hard because my go-to is to say kick the dog. But if the dog's being chill, it, you have to evaluate because you also, a kick could escalate the situation. You know, if a dog's charging me, I'm going to do anything I can to make being around me suck. And I'm going to do anything I can to protect the dog I have because that's my own number one priority, the dogs that I'm handling at the time. So if you carry compressed air with you, that's great. Um, I always make sure I have it with me when I go on walks because people in my neighborhood, their dogs like to escape. Um, but yeah, it, it's a tough one because there's so many different variables, you know? And it's mm-hmm. also like, how is your dog? So if you know it's going to be ugly with your dog, especially do everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but if they're just kind of do wandering around minding their own business, I would just kind of like avoid the situation if possible. Mm-hmm. You know, I actually, okay, so I have, I was walking Abby once and there's a big old pity loose, not that it matters, but he was, it was a big dog and he was loose. I saw him down the neighborhood and I was like, we're going to turn around now. <laughs> and we left out. Um, I just added her and she went to her kennel. <laughs> I was like, fine, let's go get comfortable. Um, so Susan, this has been fun. Um, but we have just four or five minutes left. Do you have anything else you want to say? Because I'm about done. I'm kind of in a little bit of a little bit of a feisty mood right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'm hungry for some dinner. Dinner's so, good. Right. So I posted on my Instagram story that they really missed out because I thought they missed out on some funny commentary 
for me. Um, so maybe next time they'll learn better and they'll join us for our live Q and A. Right. Um, have a snack. That's what I did. Right. I wonder, are we public? Sorry, Abby's mom just texted me and she was like, where are you? So I don't guess she can see. What? That would explain why we have like no people watching. Okay, well, I'm gonna look into this. Well, this has been a fun Q&A Tuesday. It's been quite eventful. Um, thank you to nobody who watched us. And I hope everybody has a blessed, <laughs> such a smart Alex. No, I'm just kidding. Um, you guys, I'm not always a sassy. I just. She's just feeling extra sassy today. Feeling extra. I am just. Just seeing people's face coming up. She's feisty. <laughs> okay, but seriously, thank you everybody who watches us on the replay. I hope you enjoyed those three dog training questions we answered. And as always, we are here to answer your dog training questions on Facebook and YouTube and Instagram at Pack Leader Dog and Rachel Fuller Dog Training. Night. Bye.